So welcome to the seventh lesson on our journey on the business mathematics and statistics. So uh, I hope you could recall uh, where we have stopped last week. Uh, and uh, also uh, we are the latter part of the 50%. So soon we will be entering the uh, few practical applications of our studies uh, that is under lesson area uh, 9 and 10. Um, we only have uh, maybe two uh, left uh, one is to discuss on the uh, indices that is what we are learning today and then maybe one or two more lessons and thereafter all what we are learning is on the practical uh, applications of the business mathematics and statistics so those are the much more interesting lessons i would say uh, from two point of views one is uh, from the learning uh, as well as secondary from the point of view of uh, the examination which you and i we all are hoping to uh, you know, eagerly see what uh, what's the nature of the questions that will be coming on the next paper. Uh, so, so far what we have completed up until uh, the first 50% is accounting for approximately 50% of your exam question. We just examined the 2021 uh, paper also. Uh, so, the demarcation is very much clear on the first part. Uh, but there again, uh, if you really look into the lesson that we are learning today, like indices, there will be at least one elective question uh, in the uh, uh, seven out of these eight elective questions. When you look into the nature of the questions also, students, what you can uh, understand is that, uh, I mean, uh, from a lesson like indices or net present value or treasury bond calculations, there are some uh, limitations for the examiner to test more than what is anticipated to discuss at this level for example uh, now we will be learning two main indices today so that that has been under your curriculum and uh, if you really look into the indices subjects to itself students there are many, many more multiple methods to calculate these things even the last lesson that we covered the linear regression ordinarily squares method that is only just one method to calculate the regression between two variables yeah there are many more methods but uh, from the examiner's point of view of course uh, he or she have to stick to the uh, curriculum and then question you. So what I really insist is now if you really look into the first uh, question of your paper that's a compulsory question even I know it's a 20 mark question 10 uh, sub, uh, sub parts with some MCQs and some open-ended questions. So those will be coming from all over the syllabus the examiner can be very creative but then again if you really look into a question like this uh, coming from indices the, uh, the, I mean, the, the very little you know about the computation of the indices, the limitations and some applications will at least give you a good 70 to 80% of the full marks of the question. So we are talking about good uh, 16 to 17 marks out of your 50 uh, target. Uh, I would say, uh, I shouldn't say that 50 should be your target one, but uh, that's the hurdle, that's the you know determination point. Yeah. So, uh, technically speaking, I really insist that uh, to focus on some of the lessons that we are discussing at the latter 50%, which will eventually put you at a very advantageous position. Yeah. So, having uh, said that small introduction, uh, let us uh, one moment. Let us discuss the today's lesson that is on the uh, indices. Again, I reiterate, we are at the seventh. Uh, yeah, seven subject area under our lemon earmark subject areas. The title is construction of indices. So technically, we are speaking about uh, what is an index, how to construct it, uh, what sort of practical applications that you can use by uh, an index, uh, and importantly, what are the limitations, comparisons of these methods, what are the advantages, disadvantages so on and so forth yeah so uh, the expectation is that we will try to finish off this lesson today itself and then we can move on to the next lesson on the next week um uh, why i'm really trying to you know comp uh, you know skip some of these exam questions and try to focus much more on the latter parts is that if you really look into computations like uh, treasury securities treasury bills and bonds and then when you try to uh, spend some time on net present value calculations because those will eventually give you a an advantage of this paper but not only that 
And the next level, uh, the financial management subject will essentially have a greater impact on the calculations that I'm going to learn from this uh, starting point. Yeah. So the lessons like this, we will try to uh, discuss the entire theory and discuss uh, not all, but some parts of the, some important parts of the past paper questions. And eventually we are saving more time towards the latter part of our syllabus. The area 9 and 10, those will be very much time -wise. So we may be two to three classes also may have to be spent. Yeah. All right. So this is the uh, plan for the day. We will discuss uh, what is an index, the characteristics, uh, and then uh, two main indices that we are going to learn today, namely last pairs and partial indexes and uh, how to uh, compute them. The computations are very much straightforward, unlike those computations that we went through, like the uh, coefficient of determination or correlation coefficient or linear regression for that case, yeah, calculation of beta, those are complex calculations. But these uh, calculations are very straightforward. We're just taking a small ratio. All what you have to remember is that uh, the main differences between the two indexes, last squares and partial, then, just a piece of cake, you can calculate the any index value. Yeah. And then there are two practical applications that we can learn uh, on the today's lesson. One is the real wages and the second thing is the GDP inflator. So these are some widely used indicators as well as uh, some uh, from the Sri Lankan context, uh, we can use them heavily in our day-to-day -day calculation. So we will discuss two of these things separately. Uh, and the last part is very important, the, the recalculating part. If you really look into the exam questions from area nine, definitely there will be a question provided that you are looking at the index with a series of numbers and then the rebalancing. The, the rebalancing typically occurs of uh, the factor called the rebasing. You have a base here, then you need to change that base here at some point to make sure that your numbers are very much meaningful. Once you do that, that's going to cause some problems. So that is the part that we will be learning under there. Okay. Right. So that's the plan for the day. Let's take an introduction to what is an index. These I've quoted the uh, widely used two indexes these days, the all share price index and SL, S&P, SL20 index. Forget about the theories for the moment. What are these things to us? These are the, uh, all, uh, the Sri Lankan stock market indices, the two main indices, the all share price index, which comprises of the entirety of 270 odd securities in the market, while the S&P SL20 will comprise only 20 odd securities, which is available in the market. What are the two differences? This will comprises of all the securities, while the latter will comprise of only 20 most liquid, and there are more criteria of the liquidity. 20 most liquid stocks to give you a better, uh, sorry, give the index, uh, investor a better understanding into what has happened in the market. Why do we look into these values? If you really uh, can remember the good old days, uh, the, the news channels, uh, while they were having the balanced news uh, broadcast, yeah, where they will have been local news, foreign news, sports, and then some on the financial news also, yeah, unlike these days, criticizing and, you know, bombarding with different bias opinions. Uh, you may recall that uh, some channels used to publish these key two indices, yeah? After the news, uh, the, the news bulletin, saying that this is the uh, all share price index value, this is the same thing. Why do they do that? The broader idea is that they need to give an, in, uh, give an idea as to what has happened in overall to that particular so-called stock market. What has happened in overall? What can you say? I mean, uh, the, there are many stocks, let's say Sampad Bank, Commercial Bank, Eight Constance, John Kills. Yeah. Now those stocks, some, some of those, those stocks will go up from the value. Some will go down. Some will delist. Some will add uh, to the market with an IP. Some will go through a subdivision of share. Different things can happen to the market. But when you really look into this one number, the value of this all share price index, this number, 4,701. What can you tell? You can compare this number with the previous value. The previous value may be something like, let's say, 4,690. Now, once you look into these two numbers, students, you can get an idea, okay, from, from a certain number, it has gone up to another number. Obviously, the news bulletin would say, you know, uh, it has increased 
by one percent, uh, half a percent, decrease by one percent. Likewise, then uh, the investor or the viewer will get an idea. Ah, fine, okay. Stock market has uh, gone through some sort of an increase or a decrease in general. In general, as an overall, as a whole, the broad idea is the index to give the uh, consolidated picture of what has happened on the uh, whatever the variable that we are looking into, whatever the variable that we are looking at. But why an index? You, you can just simply take a variable like x, y. Why can't we do it? Because the index will be uh, computed based on a certain criteria depending on your requirement. If it is something like inflation or the recession, it will be discussed by using a particular computation formula. If you look into a all share price index like the stock market, it will have a different computation criteria. The price into the uh, whatever the market price into the available quantity. The, the or if you look into something like an inflation, also current price into historical quantity or current price into current quantity, likewise, they will have a different base. So technically speaking, an index will have a waiting, waiting, uh, not a waiting time kind of a waiting, WBIGHT, waiting. The uh, index will not only comprise of one element, but multiple elements. We typically call it something like a basket, a basket of goods. The, the basket of goods can have some apples, some oranges, some butter, some rice and some liquor and some hand sanitizers. Likewise, different components could be there in the basket. So essentially, what are we measuring? We will be measuring the weight from one particular time frame. Over time, let me highlight this factor, one particular time frame to the next particular time over time if you just keep this basket idle we do a bit of a drawing for your clarity so this basket from comprises of many goods yeah so if you uh, keep this basket in a timeline like this at a certain given t1 time point so then there will be some weight one but if you just try to discuss at T1, there is no index movement. Why? There is a weight assigned for this particular basket, W1. But when you move from T1 to T2, the weight of this basket is going to change. The weight as in, sometimes uh, you may have one loaf of bread. Now, essentially, you are consuming two loaves of bread. Things have changed. Uh, no more liquor consumption or uh, less uh, so no sorry there were zero hand sanitizers at one point and now there is a sanitizer bottle in the basket yeah. likewise the quantity can change and also the price can also change yeah? the uh, loaf of bread was maybe around 50 rupees 55 rupees now with this uh, level of inflation it may have gone up to 65 or 70 hmm. So then effectively, this weight is not going to be W1 anymore. It is going to be W2. By an index, what we are measuring is that this movement from W1 to W2 in mathematical way. From W1 to W2 in mathematical way. That's the broader idea of an index. So it's, it's a measure. Uh, of change of a particular variable's value over time. So we can express an index by two ways. We can express either as a ratio or a percentage. Uh, the ratio will be typically something like 100, 101, 107, 97 like this. Or percentage, like something like 2% increase, 3% increase. That way also we can express what has happened to an index. Okay. Let's look into two examples. The first one, an economic index can represent the price level of a basket of goods and services. Ah, typically, just what we discussed. It could be a basket of goods comprising of only tangible items, could be some services also. Some, something like maybe 500 minutes of your uh, telecommunication time, uh, uh, like 24 hours of your uh, TV time. 
some uh, two hours of consultation from a doctor, half an hour from a lawyer. Likewise, it could comprise of services also. So for the services also, you have a price. Okay. So this is a uh, this is the most basic example. So typically now we get a sense. Okay, there is a price and a quantity or some sort of a consumption. Second example. A uh, capital market index can represent the price level of securities of a given set of securities. So this, this is what we discussed, like the all share price index and SP, SF20. Are these two the only indexes for the securities? No, there can be many more. There, there are some independent institutions who are publishing their indices. Uh, there are some Indian institutions publishing indices for the Sri Lankan market. Likewise, there are many indices, but these are the widely used and accepted and most discussed indices. What has happened to these indices nowadays? The all share price index. So uh, in 2020, May 19, this was around uh, 4,700. Nowadays, it has gone up to 9,500, 600 levels also. So what can you say after a year? Also from 2022, uh, 2020 to 2021, index has moved up drastically due to various reasons yeah so that's how we can generally discuss about an index all right these are some characteristics of an index first one an index can measure the variability of a given phenomena so what is a given phenomena given phenomena could be the weight of a basket the cost of a basket the value of a basket the variability what do you mean by the variability from t1 to t2 it changes over time two things could change one could be the price one could be the quantity or both can change also both can change also yeah. so the measurement part of that change is the phenomena that will be measured by the index so basically an index is a nothing but a measuring device a measuring mechanism Second one, an index can measure the variability of an incidence movement over a period of time. Yeah. So this movement will be measured over a period of time. So the first part, if I sorry, that make more sense. First one is that we are measuring on a given phenomenon. Second one is that it is measured over a period of time. Over a period of time. Third one, an index movement can be explained as a percentage. So typically students, if you really uh, look into the uh, movement of the all share price index, yeah. so uh, one may say, okay, the all share price index, mechanical one may say the price, uh, the current level is 9,650. The next day, again, it will say 9,670. So, can you get a real sense if you don't remember the previous number or if you don't have an idea of the values of these 9000 levels, 100 levels, 50 levels, 300 levels. Likewise, if you don't have a general idea of where these numbers have been, typically it doesn't make much sense. So that's the third important point. Uh, the index movement can be explained as a percentage and it will make more meaning to the viewers' eyes. We'll see how it all makes sense with an example as given below. What do we have here? Okay. We have, let's uh, carefully, uh, you know, go through all uh, column by column. The first column, quantity is bought in the base year. Okay. Something called this base year word is a bit new, but uh, let's think for the moment, this is the starting point. Yeah, the starting point. 150 cups of coffee this this doesn't mean that for the for a given day that uh, the, the consumer has uh, you know consumed 150 cups of coffee but uh, maybe over a period of time so 20 pcs maybe personal computers something like that 12 insurance payments okay, this seems to be monthly 12 insurance payments and 10 pairs of jeans okay now these seems to be some consumption some uh, something to drink something to uh, you know maybe do some work with computers something to uh, get insured with and something to wear with jeans right the second column what do we have here price in the base year per unit that means okay 150 coffee cups one unit is four dollars 
and then the immediate column is nothing but 150 multiplied by 4 150 multiplied by 4 that is 600 dollars all right so similarly now this uh, cup of coffee is four dollars this computer is uh, 400 dollars one insurance payment is 80 dollars and one pair of jeans is 60 dollars so likewise students third column is nothing but the total price uh, spent on this particular year when you add these individual elements up it will add to the the cost of market basket that means this entire consumption for this given year this so-called base year is 10,160 okay okay now this is where we started then what are these other two columns this is nothing but what has happened to this entire business of 150 copies 20 pieces 12 uh, so and so what has happened after one year and after two years what are the differences that we are seeing here it's nothing but the price differences see four dollars uh, per uh, coffee cup has changed to 4.1 and then to 4.2 yeah computers also uh, one more here, one computers also 400 to 410 and 420 yeah. insurance payments uh, pretty much 80 85 87 and the pairs of jeans uh, pretty much same 60 62 63 likewise it has gone to pretty much uh, straight same levels okay now when you look into these totals what do we see here now this first year you're spending 10,160 for this consumption the second year what has happened now now it's no longer 10,160 but marginally up to 10,455 bear with me this example we are not changing the quantity we are just assuming that we are going to consume the same quantity third year from 160 to 704 now see so small increase now when you take this price index as 100 from this point from this point as 100 what will happen in the second year we will closely take a look what will happen in the second year it has gone up to 102.9 102.9 how do you calculate this one this is simply to take the division of this uh, uh, new value that is 10,455 divided by 10,100. In mathematics, this is all what we do from x2 to x1. If you see an increase, x2 divided by x1 as a percentage. If it is a negative number, we know it has a decrease. Hmm? Once you take this fraction, you are getting nice 102.9 as the answer. The second point. Now this is point to point. Yeah, the first first uh, two numbers 102, 205. This is point to point. So 10,455 has changed to 10,704. Yeah. So eventually, sorry, sorry. Uh, moment I made a small mistake. Yeah. So this uh, initial this the total cost of the market market. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, market basket we are computing this uh, price index so-called index we haven't learned how to compute indexes but just i'm giving you a glimpse what is an index how to calculate yeah? so this 100 to 105 now this movement has happened by taking 100 and uh, sorry 10704 this particular uh, cost of the mass uh, market basket after two years in compared with the base year yeah, this is not year and year year on year rather we take the consumption of the first year, second year, and the third year. So the third year is 10,704 divided by 10,160. So that's how you get this number 105.4. 105.4. Now, what do we see? What do we see? 100 to 102 to 105. What do we see here? Simply seems to be a small appreciation of the consumption baskets value consumption baskets value now this is one aspect of expressing an index you take the starting point as 100 starting point as 100 and then you measure okay 100 is equivalent to 10160 and so then what is equivalent to uh, 10455 is equivalent to 102 
10,160 is equivalent to 100. So what is the equivalent value for 10,704? That is equal to 105 points something. Yeah. So similarly, now this is one aspect. Similarly, you can uh, you know do another percentage increase uh, also. Look at the second one. Uh, the so-called inflation rate is being calculated like this. Yeah. This 10,455 to uh, 10,160, there is an increase of 295 divided by 10,160 that's the starting point so this is technically a 2.9 percent increase a 2.9 percent increase from 100 to 102.9 yeah so this is even this question how do you calculate the inflation rate yeah so this is the simple increase based on a percentage on a percentage okay now we stop here for a moment 102.9 is the current level. Now, carefully look into the second computation of this 2.4. What have we done here? Now we are not comparing it with the uh, uh, moment. Now we are com not com comparing it with the previous uh, 100. Now we are going to take this as the starting point. 102.9 is the starting point. Yeah. So the increase of 2.4% what you see here is nothing but the 10,100 and uh, sorry 10,704 compared with the 10,455. So again, you take this as the hundred or the starting point. So compared to this point, now the index has gone up by 2.4 percent, or rather, we call it the inflation has moved up year on year basis 2.4 percent. Okay. So typically, this example. Is going to give you a brief idea as to what is the uh, cost of cost or the value of the market basket and two distinguished methods to calculate one is by taking 100 as a starting point and then expressing uh, what has happened to the uh, the value of the basket from year one two three four five with this comparison 10,160 is equal to 100 the second method is that okay the one aspect that is fine year on year you can compare the simple percentage gain or loss simple percentage gain or loss yeah so that's what we said uh, over here an index could be yeah calculated by either based on a sorry either based on ratio like 100 versus another 100 102 likewise or as a percentage okay let's take a moment and see uh, the questions that we have up until now how is pricing is calculated the initial ah, right i think yeah i think we are the same page this is an assumption you know, this 100 the starting point of uh, price index is 100 is an assumption if you uh, think of something like let's say i want to start it with 50 no problem at all but in, in typically in mathematics and statistics uh, if you if you start this with something like let's say 50 hmm? let's say instead of 100 we are going to start this with a 50 no harm mathematically one can do so then what is going to be the value over here hmm? so this is going to be uh, I mean, we can calculate it something like this hmm. 10,160 now we are equating it to 50 if that is the case, what is the value of the 10,455? Yeah. So the fraction is going to be something like this. 50 divided by 10,160 multiplied by 10,455. Yeah. So this is how we calculate it in the good old days. If I look into the value 10,160 multiplied by 10,455 I'm going to get yeah something close to 51.45 is that the value 50 divided by let me try again 10,160 multiplied by 10,455 yeah 51.45 okay now this is the second point previously uh, it was 100 from 100 to it moved up to 102.9 
now from 52 it is moving up to 51.45 likewise the next point also let me put some friction on the value something like 53 yeah so likewise you can start with a different number also no harm at all but typically students in indices uh, the, the moment you start with something like uh, 1, 10, 100 or 1000, the next uh, computation, the next comparison is going to be very easy and very comparable. You, uh, the, the, the current inflation uh, computation in the, the Sri Lankan context, uh, some times ago we had a starting point as year 2000 is equal to 100. Uh, subsequently year 2010 or 12, I can't remember exactly, we rebased it. We said again, okay, fine, forget about the past. Now we are going to uh, equate to 2010 or 12, this starting point freshly as 100. From that onwards, 103, 107, 109, likewise, you can express. So this assumption, this uh, the starting point as an assumption, this 100 is something which we always make uh, merely because of the fact that it's going to be very easy to compare the numbers now if, even if you look into uh, values like what you see here yeah see 100 to 100 and 100 to 102.9 and if you look into this uh, number also it's just a 2.9 percent increase but from 50 to 51.45 one has to do another computation and quickly see what's this percentage change yeah so likewise there are some advantages if you start anything with a hundred. So that's why typically under indices, our starting point, the base year so-called the starting point, first point, we typically give a value of hundred. But you can do the exact same exercise by just taking one as a starting point. Yeah. If you do something like that, all these numbers are going to be very much same, but it will have some more decimals. 1.00 is the starting point so this is going to be 1.029 it's going to be 1.054 likewise your starting in uh, starting value is going to uh, either make sense uh, for easy computation or you can start with anything on your own all right so these are some of the uh, importances of any indices. Uh, again, uh, fairly pretty much boring theories, but then again, when you focus on your exams point of view, uh, sometimes these things could be questionable. So you need to get a broader idea. We go through one by one. Indices give a good basis of comparison. Hmm. It does. It definitely does. Why? So uh, if you take, uh, for example, Colombo Stock Exchange, yeah, you take the in now the all share price index and the SNP SL20 index is the uh, broader two indexes that we discussed. But typically, students, there are some uh, more indexes for segments also. There are so-called segments in our market. I'm still under the first point, giving you some example. Yeah, uh, construction indices, access engineering, uh, likewise, few uh, companies will go into that one. Uh, banking index. Commercial, Sampath, HMB, all these listed banks will go into that index. Agriculture, manufacturing, telecommunication, SLT, dialogue, likewise. For some, some indexes, you may only have maybe two or three companies, but some will have many. Likewise, you would have some uh, different composition in our Columbus location. Now, just by looking at all share price index, uh, you may not get an idea. But if you really look into these individual segment wise indexes, segment wise indices, Due to various uh, government policy decisions, uh, due to various market appetites, the movements of markets, the foreign appetite, the, whether the foreigners are thinking that our banking sector is going to be good or bad or different opinions, can maybe change the segment-wise indices much more variant or vibrant than the base index, than the base index of our all share price index. Yeah? I just Try to show you uh, with some graphics. So this may be the movement of the all share price index, hmm? ASPI. But when you look into the composition, hmm, this is going to be something like construction. It's going to be something like bank. Hmm? So uh, similar to this all share price index. Now this is the all share price index. I'm just plotting. 
with freehand. Now, when you look into indexes like construction, you may see suddenly, okay, the construction index has gone up. But when you look into the banking index, it is pretty much in line with the other world share price index. Ah, now, once you compare these two indices, I1 and I2, definitely you can say, fine, we can see a significant growth in the Sri Lankan construction market just by looking at the indices. Hmm. So that's why we say indices is going to give you a good basis of comparison, good basis of comparison. Otherwise, how can you compare the banking sector uh, performance versus the construction sector? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. You have to do a larger amount of uh, maybe regression analysis, maybe some uh, uh, trying to identify uh, covariance between these two indices and see uh, so not the indices, the individual companies and see whether you can find any deviation or convergence. Likewise, it is going to be very much mathematical and boring. But just merely looking at the index itself, one can easily compare and take decision. Second one, the assistive in policy making in economic and business activities. Likewise, when you take the values uh, of individual numbers of 12 months or 52 weeks effectively the decision maker will have no time to invigilate individual numbers and make a decision so uh, typically something like an index uh, index summarizing all the uh, uh, individual outcomes of whatever the phenomena that we are discussing that value is going to be very much assistive in policy making because the policy makers don't have the entire day to just scrutinize and analyze individual numbers and see and make a decision. They will typically look into the index value of, uh, let's say, AWPLR right now, and maybe AWPLR in like uh, 17 months ago, maybe seven months ago, like plot it into a trend and easily make a decision. Yeah, second point. Third point. It can be useful in measuring the general trend of a given phenomena. The general trend, like likewise, this uh, two charts is going to be very much uh, assisting. General trend. Uh, what's the general trend? All share price index has generally gone up. Uh, banking, uh, not much compared. All share price index is like that. Banking is like this. So the trend is uh, this M of this uh, uh, M or beta. Hmm? Of this uh, all share price index seems to be a bit higher, but banking is somewhat lower. But what is with the construction? Yeah, it's on an uptrend with a much more higher M or beta. In in contrast, if you see something like uh, telecommunication, if you see this all share price index is moving like this, and telecommunication index is like this. Now, it's a general trend is with the time it has gone down while the other indexes are performing on an uptrend. Likewise, the general trend can be easily seen by the value of the index plotted into a small graph. As I said, for what index numbers are used in deflating. Uh, for example, they can be used to adjust the original data for price changes or to adjust wages for cost of living changes. Uh, now we all some of our salaries if you really look into have a some small allowance called cost of living allowance cost of living allowance how do we do it uh, we just take the uh, inflation published uh, and then we deflate whatever that allowance the starting allowance let's say it was uh, twenty thousand for example and then we take the inflation number computed by uh, let's say Columbus price index uh, or, or, or maybe another index yeah we take something like inflation related index the price levels and then we inflate that value that 20,000 by that much for example 20,000 is this particular allowance inflation is 3% so then what can we do? We can inflate this. We can inflate this by 3% to 20,600. So that's another very 
uh, widely used uh, application of the investors. It is used for deflating, deflating or inflating uh, both ways. Okay, that's the fourth point. Fifth, indices can be helpful in comparing the purchasing power of different countries. Now, this is something very much interesting when you look into the current price levels of our Sri Lanka. So, uh, myself, I have also seen some of the comparisons of our uh, wide use supermarkets and then uh, what is happening with uh, Tesco or uh, maybe uh, Walmart, yeah, likewise. So, uh, uh, index, if you really, uh, you know, those are some one of comparisons, what is the price of a loaf of bread, so and so. But when you really want to uh, calculate uh, and compare the purchasing power of different countries from your country to maybe uh, Indonesia uh, to USA, we may all consume in the same nature of things like uh, uh, maybe apparel to uh, consumables, uh, to wearables, electronic devices like this, we may be consuming certain, certain things. And then what do we really need to do? We need to calculate the purchasing power, the ability the ability. Typically, we say uh, developing or underdeveloped countries, their purchasing power is very much lower. What can you do with your monthly salary? Uh, in a developed uh, countries, person can do maybe multiple folds, maybe 20 times or 50 times likewise. So that comparison can also be done by indices. Indices. We have different indices in such instances. Inflation is a typical simple one just to compare what has happened to the price levels. But for purchasing power comparisons also, there are many different indices that you can use from one country to the other. A good example is something like Big Mac Index. Big Mac Index. This, uh, I think McDonald's, the Big Mac is a standard product. Even in Sri Lanka, from UK to Australia, the the, the size, the quantity, the, the, the weight of the uh, certain uh, meat items and then the cheese and all uh, that you are putting in is pretty much standard. So typically, the Big Mac index is calculated by uh, just simply taking the price of a Big Mac in a certain country. In our country, it may be somewhere around 960 rupees or nowadays maybe 1050, something like that. So that versus what's the price in UK, not the price in Australia. Likewise, when you put it in all these values, you can compute the purchasing power. Okay, last one. Index numbers of business activities can highlight economic progress of different countries. Of course, now this is one of the very important uh, aspects rather. So the economic progress, we call it the GDP growth is been entangled, is been combined with multiple activities. Like uh, it could be something to do with the production, it could be something to do with the human development, uh, the healthcare uh, sector uh, uh, development, like the quality of education. Likewise, the economic progress is combined with different, different activities, for profit and non for profit, government, private, all over the place. So these uh, different indices, for example, if you take something like Human Development Index or Guinea Index, those uh, is going to give some idea of the economic development, uh, or rather the socio-economic development of one country to the other. Something like even this uh, freedom of press, a uh, level of corruption. How do you compare? If you see all these articles that uh, freedom of press in uh, country X has gone uh, down from uh, uh, 30%. How do you compare that 30%? That's the current value to the previous year's value. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, those are again, interestingly, we discuss this again and again, those are qualitative indicators. Isn't that so? What do we do under mathematics and statistics? We find methodologies to quantify them. Once you quantify them, you have a Let's say, uh, for example, if you take something like uh, freedom of press, freedom of press and not social media, not like you, you and I, what we do, but the press, whether they will have the freedom to uh, write anything they want or it's been controlled. Hmm? Uh, countries like, uh, uh, some countries like in uh, Asian continent versus 
countries in developed uh, maybe European uh, region to the US, the freedom of press may be different. Now we need to really quantify it, but we don't know how to do it. The, the, the simple method is to find some indicators, let's say number of cases against journalists, number of accidents or number of complaints. Anything to do with this number of number of number of these can add into a nice maybe 10 to 12 different quantifiable things. Let's say a number of complaints pledged by uh, the journalists uh, saying that the government or any uh, person is influencing their uh, press freedom. Yeah, uh, you take that number. In United States, it may be uh, four. In Europe, it may be three. In some countries in uh, Asian continent, it may be something like ten. Then that is the starting point. Now, then you measure it again. The same questions, measure it again. You US uh, from 3 to it has gone to 3.1, that 2 to uh, 2.3, that 10 to 20. Likewise, ah, now when you see these numbers, again, you can recategorize them. Maybe you can cluster them, maybe you can put it in a list saying that uh, from the index values of this uh, freedom of uh, this thing, Europe is the top, then USA, then Asia, likewise. Yeah? Then you do the exercise again. The next year also, you can get the same values. And now, then you can compare the socio-economic development of that particular so freedom of press example. Eventually, what have we done? We have compared the index point of this year versus the previous year versus the previous year. That's all what we have done. Yeah? So these are some interesting, boring importance of indices, but they are in mind. But uh, these will be questionable sometimes. Okay. Enough of uh, indices and their uh, glamour. Now let's try to do some computations. The weighted index, index numbers. This is where we are, will be introduced to these two so-called last pairs and partial methods of calculating indexes. Okay. So for simplicity sake, uh, sake student, now we will be uh, assuming okay, it's going to be a basket of goods. A basket of goods. So first, uh, we will be uh, what we will be doing is that okay, if it is a basket, then there will have to be some items, some items. So this basket will comprise of some items. Okay. So each item will have a price per unit and quantity. Isn't that so? Now from this item, it may be 3. From this other item, it may be 2. From this oval shape item, it may be 5. So likewise, in this basket, you may find some quantities from one particular given uh, type. For clarity's sake, let me just highlight. Okay, now this is going to be one type. This is going to be another type. It's going to be a third type. Likewise, from, you know, from this basket, you may find quantities and prices per unit. Price per unit. Okay. Now, these are the buzzwords we will be going to use. P is going to be equal to the price of the good or service. Q is for the quantity. Zero is for the base year. N is for the current year. What is this base year? Base year is nothing but if you uh, put all this uh, data in a timeline. This is year zero, year one, year two, year three. Likewise, you can maybe start your discussion from here onwards. If that is the case, this is going to be your base year. Or maybe uh, this Y0, Y1, Y2, these things will stand like this. Maybe you uh, change of mind, you may start from here, from Y2. So Y2 will be your base year in that case. You're starting your discussion from here. First example, you are starting your discussion from here. So the base year could be anywhere that you are going to start your analysis or discussion from. 
what is the last phase method is going to tell you we are going to you now careful look at the equation it's very simple we are going to uh, freeze the quantity the quantity that we are going to use in the base year the starting point we are going to freeze it what do you mean by freezing we are not going to change it do you remember the example of, the, of this coffee cups and these computers yeah similar we are going to freeze this since q0 is constant that means whatever we have used now if i uh, put it in a timeline in base year that is the zero this is the end the current year you had some p0 and q0 hmm? now here you have some pn and qn now although i'm going to tell you that you're going to freeze it uh, so and so but uh, the quantity can be uh, now qn could be equal to q0 or otherwise maybe this q0 is unchanged maybe it has changed but typically everything will change p p will change q will change okay so under last previous method students what are we assuming we are assuming this piece this q0 is going to be same on this point also so instead of qn instead of qn actually we are assuming that this is also going to be q0 is going to be q0 that means whatever we are consuming at the starting point those quantities we are going to consume the same quantity same quantities hmm? one might think okay it's a it's a it's, it's, it's a funny way to uh, you know can compute this uh, index um, you all know that okay maybe uh, at the beginning of this year yeah, january 2021 we may be consuming maybe on average five kilos of rice per month yeah let's say uh, with, a, with a typical household of maybe four person now maybe due to various reasons maybe things becoming expensive or less affordable that five kilos may have gone up or gone down so what's the meaning of you know keeping this q0 uh, as at the january 2021 five kilos uh, per uh, family the the idea is that uh, last year's method is trying to do an easy comparison an easy comparison of the price movement from zero to n price movement of zero to n so uh, one can you know effectively take pn and qn versus p0 and q0 and do a comparison that will make some sense but effectively uh, if you freeze uh, either p or q they are only we can make an effective comparison effective comparison otherwise your comparison uh, the uh, the basket that you are going to compare will comprise of many different things hmm. uh, typically of course we know that uh, you know from time to time uh, the rebasing is very important uh, rebalancing reweighting those are very important which we will be discussing in a little while but for comparison sake comparison say it's always very uh, useful to freeze either at q0 or either at qn either at the current quantity we are uh, going to look into what has happened to the past prices or with the historical quantity we are going to look into what has happened to the future price okay having said that so last pairs computation is very straightforward all what we do is that we take the sigma we know we all know, know sigma what is now we take the individual prices of the current uh, year's uh, basket multiplied by the starting point quantities five kilos one liter like right and divide the same by the starting price into quantity starting price into quantity so the starting price is p0 and uh, quantity is q0 so effectively what we have done is that we are assuming that whatever we consumed at the zero point is the same consumption let me take you through a nice example uh, for us to be familiar with calculate the last pairs index using the 2012 as the base year. what do we have here we have some rice uh, sugar chili flour and uh, coconut oil okay 2012 
is going to be the base here or the starting point and 2016 is our point we need to calculate the index okay so typically uh, what is the statement it says using year 2012 as the base year what does it says it says okay take year 2012 as the starting point as 100 or 1 or 50 or whatever you like okay so the prices and quantities if you careful look into what has happened okay this price for example if we try to freeze rice and discuss price first one price has moved up from 70 to 85 quantity from 40 to 35 ah, quantity has declined maybe due to various reasons maybe price is going up mm -hmm. uh, economies of uh, demand and supply is kicking in maybe due to that maybe due to other reasons it is quantity is going down and price is going up so likewise students if you really look into all these individual items uh, of sugar chili and flour and coconut oil the prices and quantities have changed from 1.2 to 2020 2016 okay that's what we can observe right now. All right, now let's look into the answer. How do we do the calculation? First things first. Uh, the the most and the uh, 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 the significant thing is to I would say under the calculation of indexes is to simply name your columns. So instead of this uh, price and quantities, uh, these P's and Q's, I just put the symbols as per the equation that I have just learned is going to be my starting point yeah so this is going to be nothing but p0 and q0 2012 is my starting year so 70 is the price 40 is the quantity and then i can easily multiply these two values and take the p0 into q0 it's going to be 2800 similarly i can do the entire thing for the rest of the items in my basket okay what are in my basket Rice, sugar, chili, flour, and coconut oil. So the value of this basket in 2012, 4,250 in rupees. I'm assuming P0 is given in uh, rupees. Excuse me. I'm assuming P0 is given in rupees, and the price of this basket is going to be 4,250. Okay. The next thing is taking the 2016 now these are going to be my pn and qn am i going to just multiply pn into qn and just take pn into qn no not really what do i have to take here qn effectively can be omitted actually we don't have to write this even but for completion's sake i just put these uh, values for p's and q's then what have, what i have to do i have to multiply pn this prices these new prices in 2016 by the quantity in the base year by the quantity in the base year this is p n multiplied by q zero hmm? not p n multiplied by q n right so that calculation is what you see here see 1425 3400 18 to 100, 800, 1 into 150, 150, 330, and this is 600. Okay. Now, what do we have here? We have two sigmas. First sigma is 4250, and the second sigma is 5280. Okay. I told you this uh, index computation equations are very simple and straightforward. All what you have to do is to take the fraction. Take the fraction pn into q0 that's what you have here pn into q0 divided by p0 into q0 multiplied by 100 it's going to be equal to 124.24 124.24 what is this students now this is effectively what i have done i have equated i have equated this point as 100 if that is 100, this is going to be equal to 124. Forget about the decimals for the moment. So 
typically, if I'm discussing this as a uh, price or inflation index, I can say, okay, prices have moved up by 24% from year 2012 to year 2016. That's the effective usage of this computation. We have to find a usage for any computation, so this is that. The computation of this index is being taken by uh, the, uh, the fairly straightforward price into quantity, price into quantity. What is effective price into quantity is the value, value of this particular goods and services. So simple, isn't that so? So the answer to this question, calculate the last price index using year 2012 as a basis, that means year 2012 is going to be 100. If that is 100, this year 2016 is going to get the value of 124. This is what we were looking for. This is the number that we wanted under last year's methods. Okay. So this is one computational method. Let's move on to the second computational method. Now this equation is pretty much similar to the previous one. Isn't that so? Yeah. This is... Uh, sigma p's and q's into 100. This is also sigma p's and q's into 100. Yeah? But carefully look into the change here, as I told you at the beginning. Now, instead of qn freeze, q0 freezing, now we are going to freeze qn. What is qn? qn is the quantity that will be used at the current year. This is the starting, P0, Q0, this is Pn and Qn. So this quantity, this last quantity we are going to freeze. That means we are assuming that whatever the quantities that we are going to use right now, 5 kilos, uh, 1 uh, gas tank, uh, 2 uh, uh, sunlight soap, likewise, that quantity that we are using at the present moment must have been the quantity that we may have used for the historical periods also. Yeah. So this is a bit, uh, bit tough, uh, I would say, uh, broader assumption saying that, okay, whatever we are using right now must have been each, the quantities that is being used in the past. But compared to the last phase, now last phase method also have the broad assumption, the quantities at the beginning is continuing. But that, of course, may be uh, for the comparison sake. Maybe for the comparison sake. But this uh, partial method, if you really look into it, uh, of course, partial is also a comparison. But this assumption seems to be a bit more unrealistic. Isn't that so? Because the quantities that we are using uh, currently Qn may have come to Qn due to various reasons. And of course, we for sure know that Qn is not going to be the same quantity may have been used in the previous years. However, these are the two distinguishments of these two methods. Whether you are going to free, uh, freeze the uh, uh, Q0 or whether you are going to freeze the Qn. Okay. All the rest of the things are very much uh, similar and straightforward. See, this is uh, used for the quantities of the current year to compute the index. Uh, compared to the base year quantities used by uh, last few years. Uh, the equation is going to be very uh, much similar. The symbols are almost similar. P, Q, 0, N, these are all similar. Except the fact that now uh, the previous example, if we really try to calculate using the partial method, let's just see how the output is going to be. Okay. So the last pairs method, uh, now, uh, but the last phase method previously we used the p0 into q0 isn't that so so this part this part p0 into q0 is what we used to compute but under partial now q0 is not significant what is a significant uh, portion right now it is going to be nothing but the qn yeah qn the quantity of the car, sorry, quantity of the current year, 
40 years, the current year. Okay. So this uh, Q0 effectively doesn't go to add any value here. We multiply P0 with Qn and take these values. And on the next run, we multiply Pn by Qn and take the values in right over here. Okay. So effectively what we have done, we have done the exact same computation just by changing instead of uh, Q0, just by taking Qn, just by taking Qn, okay. So uh, for the uh, partial index, we are getting the value of 4345 divided by 3510, pretty much similar to this 124 odd value, 123.79. Yeah. Previously on the last pairs, we got a value of 124.24. Partial method also, not much of a difference. For this example, 123.79. Okay. See, fairly straightforward calculation. So this is all what you have to calculate, except for the this, this rebasing we will be discussing in a little while. Except for that, this is all what is there to calculate. Again, reiterating, last pairs, we freeze the quantity at the beginning base here, partial, we freeze the quantity at the current year, the current consumption. Okay. So that's how you do a computation. Let's have a bit of a comparison of these two methods. Are these the only two methods? No, there are plenty more different uh, index computations methods, but for our curriculum and for our learning, this is all about learning that there's something called indexes and uh, taking one or two uh, example methods to learn how to calculate an index using some raw data. Yeah? So uh, bear in mind that this is not the only two methodologies in the world, there are many more. Having said that, this is just a small comparison between the last phase and the partial. First point. Last phase method attempts to assign weights of the base here and hence it is less costly to calculate. Uh, what do you mean by that? When you try to uh, do the computation student, uh, students, what you really want to do is that uh, to take P and Q of the particular uh, time uh, frames from 0 to N, it is costly. What is the cost associated? You have to deploy somebody and go there and calculate. Now, for example, if you really look into the, uh, the Sri Lankan uh, inflation index, the Department of Census and Statistics, if you look into their computation methodology, they are the granular level. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the school teachers contribute to the computations of these prices and quantities of these uh, individual inflation uh, items in the basket. So, what's the uh, input effect effectively that they have to give? They have to go to the uh, uh, the local uh, fairs, the local markets, and then uh, effectively they have asked the questions from the consumers, from the uh, mudalalis and the, the wholesalers, and ask the quantities and prices of the different consumption items. Typically, they can go to a seller uh, party or a grocery shop and then ask for the prices. But what about the quantities? What about the quantities? Quantities is going to be very, very, very much different. Students, bear with me. As in, if you really want to, you know, go to a household in Monaragala district and ask, okay, what is your exact consumption? They may have no idea. Maybe they're not keeping a track. Maybe they're just, uh, you know, buying as they go. So from one month to the next month, their consumption could be completely uh, different from one another. So uh, if you do a general uh, price level calculation, sorry, uh, price calculation for this uh, entire Sri Lanka, just by uh, taking into account of these uh, half-baked uh, values, what is going to happen? It's going to not make much of a sense of the real inflation of the country. Just making an example here. So uh, the consumption, the weights 
computation from one month to the next month, if you really, really want to do it, it is going to be very much costly. Be very much costly. So that's why typically we have to uh, uh, we agree with the last phase method. Why? It is assigning weights on the base tier and we are forgetting about the consumption of the uh, the, the consumption variation of these quantities at the next period, period 1, 2, 3 and 4. But we are focusing on the price differentials, on the price differentials. It is just like you freeze a set of items, that items may have been uh, computed carefully by looking at a hundreds of thousands of different data points of the particular historical points. But those quantities, let's say you take the basket of a, a four um, household uh, personnel, maybe mother, father, or grandson, and then they may be consuming, let's say, five kilos of rice, and then uh, half a gas canister, and then maybe two uh, bars of uh, sunlight and maybe one pair of rubber slippers likewise that basket may have some historical uh, value added uh, weighting once you done the weighting based on that uh, historical computation then effectively all what you have to do is that you forget about those weights and then just look into the price of these items so it is less costly to calculate less costly to calculate that's the key advantages, of course, of the last phase method. Second point, last phase method has a common denominator and it, it is very easy to compare the index points. Now, if you really look into these two points of partial and last phase, the uh, common denominator that you can see under the last phase is nothing but the P0 and Q0. You compare the same with the uh, partial method, what is going to happen? The Qn from one now from this point to the next point. If you take the graph a little bit further, this is n plus one. It's going to be p uh, sorry p n plus one to q n plus one. Okay. Now this this current q n plus one is going to be the comparison. Yeah. This is going to be Pn plus 1 into Qn plus 1 divided by P0 Qn plus 1. Now, now what has happened? From the point of view of uh, this n point to the n plus 1 point, of course, the quantity change has changed the denominator. This denominator is now something different. Not uh, uh, now here the denominator would have been p zero q n. Okay. Now this versus this, you can see it is changed due to q n change into q n plus one. Okay. So let's keep that uh, aside for a little while. Look into the last place with it. So, irrespective of whether you are looking at n period or n plus 1 period, this is going to be common. This is going to be common. Why P0 is the uh, initial price, Q0 is the initial quantity. So, this is going to be common. Technically, we are tracing it, a common denominator. So, that's why it is going to be very easy to compare the index point. Why, what do you mean by the easiness? From the first index point to the next index point, all what you are effectively uh, changing is the numerator, the top part of the equation. So the index points are going to add much more sense, 100, 200, and 403. Likewise, you can say, okay, uh, four of an increase, one decrease, likewise, you can easily compare. But if you use the partial index, of course, you have to make sure that uh, do some generalization, otherwise your denominator is a different from one to the next. So the comparison is going to be a bit much skeptical. Okay. So last phase again has another point, it's easy to compare. But why do we really need this partial in that case? Because partial is going to be much more realistic. Much more realistic. Why? It is using updated information. It's using updated information. What is that updation? It's nothing but the quantity, the weighting. The, the weights of, and the quantities, now the, these households 
we discussed uh, like uh, this five kilos of rice from this uh, month to the next month due to various reasons it may have gone up to seven and a half kilos now if you if you keep your expenditure uh, stuck at uh, five kilos what is going to happen the last pair's output of course the price is going to change but the last pair's output will not effectively get the change of the quantity from 5 to 7.5 why it is just placing the quantity at the beginning of the period we're just focusing on the price so that's why although it is going to be very costly although the comparisons are going to be uh, somewhat different but pasha is much more better simply because of the fact that it is having more updated information better weights and accordingly the realisticness of the index computation is eminent all right so these are the comparison points of our two indexes okay all right few more slides then we are done with the uh, theories and we can move on to the exam questions i am not aware of it there are some some there are few, few more areas to discuss all right quickly factors to be considered in preparing the indexes first one base year should be a reasonable year the base year if you take the inflation uh, calculation with a base year of 107 uh, sorry uh, uh, something like way earlier than uh, 1900s something like 1996 or maybe uh, 1986 maybe 1976 if you take that kind of a base year what is going to happen your starting point is very old very old so typically students because of that factor there is something called the rebasing which we will be discussing at last the rebasing finds the answer time to time you are changing in the base year and now you may get be getting the question okay fine now we nicely did a uh, index maybe 100 107 109 104 it went down also like guys we have the numbers now once we do the rebasing it's going to be a bit messy isn't that so but of course it is going to be because the numbers are going to be completely recomputed but the basing Uh, uh, the base year selection is very crucial. Unless you have a very reasonable base year, hmm, uh, something like uh, maybe less than five years, less than ten years, depending on your uh, uh, computation, maybe from statistics to sorry, from business to uh, healthcare to telecommunication, it will have significant uh, uh, reasoning. to select a uh, 10 years or 20 years old base to uh, the current one versus selecting 5 years kind of a very reasonable one yeah but the whatever the index has to be chosen with a reasonable starting year reasonable base year if it is typically if it is very old then we can not make much sense okay second one basket of items should be carefully selected to represent true and a fair usage ah now this selection is very important hmm? for example if you take uh, the uh, the one of the consumer price index in the country the uh, the ccpi hmm? the greater colombo price index may not be the entire country's consumption of items hmm? may be somewhat different from the greater colombo to the suburbs their consumption and whatever the consumption of a uh, person in the kalapur district may be different so the that that's the example for this basket selection uh, from area to the next area if you are doing a comparison you have to make sure that the selection is very much fair and uh, the items that you going to put for the you may be not consuming soap on in one area but you may be heavily using soap in one area you may have to choose an average in that case try to find a find a good uh, some kind of a uh, representer like mean median or mode or anything which will be the number okay third point weighting should represent the actual usage the i would say this is one of the most important characters the weighting what do you mean by the weighting that's the as assignment of this w1 
to W2. This is coming from W1A, W1B, W1C. Kind of, these are individual A, B, C kind of uh, goods in the basket. Yeah? So this is 30%, this is 20%, this is 60% uh, likewise. Sorry, this is 50% likewise. You are assigning some weights. So from the, from the next uh, point also, you may have to reweight it. Hmm? Why? Now the consumption has changed. Hmm? 50% likewise, W2C may be 50%. C can change, A has increased and B has decreased. So this uh, once you select a certain basket students, uh, the assignment of weights uh, is going to start, uh, start your first basket. And then once you are changing it to the next basket, you have to be very sensible and actual usage has to be uh, reflected. For example, this may be rice. The selection, selection of rice is what we discussed in the previous one. Putting rice into this basket itself is a selection. It's a greater choice. That's the first one. The second is, once you put this uh, basket, uh, so, sorry, once you put rice into the basket, you start with W1A. So, that W1 is the maybe 5 kilos. But then, it is going to change from 5 to 7.5. Now, if you do not capture this change, if you do not capture this change, then your weighting is going to be different. Yeah. If you instead of this, if you kept on calculating for 5 kg for the second basket, effectively, you know, doing any justice. So that's why third point is very important. Once you select a basket, the actual usage should be reflected in that particular basket. Actual usage should be reflected. Sometimes you may have to completely remove rice in the next month. Maybe due to various reasons, rice consumption is no longer there. Sometimes you may have to double it. Sometimes you may have to uh, introduce one or more variants of rice. Likewise, the actual usage may sh should be reflected in this index. Okay. And the last one is the uh, what we discussed, the calculation methodology, last pairs, Parche, or uh, Finch, or any other calculation method should be used depending on your scenario. Alright, so these are few other factors that you can consider. Now these are again uh, the reciprocal of what we just discussed. Now these are going to be the issues that is going to uh, face by the researcher when you are preparing an index. Quickly let's go through accuracy of the data collected. So the uh, you put some agents to the field and try to collect this data, but what if they just come empty-handed or they just, uh, you know, replicate the uh, previous uh, week or previous month's uh, data sheet? Mm -hmm. What if they really don't uh, speak to the consumption agents and then uh, instead they just talk to the analysis and so on and so forth? Yeah. So similarly, the data collection accuracy is going to be your biggest issue. There, there won't be any issue bigger than this because the uh, the moment you put garbage into your calculation it is not going to make much sense uh, in the output yeah second point difficulty in selecting the base year we told you the, the base year should not be a very older year but then again uh, the selection may what would be the the best base year would it be 2010 or 2012 one would argue 2012 may have been a year, uh, sorry, if you take something like 2008 or 2009, one would say, okay, we had a civil unrest in the country at that time, an internal conflict, so whatever the consumption may not be the real consumption. Likewise, if you take 20, uh, uh, maybe uh, 10 or 11, one would say, okay, there may have been, a, so, so 7 to 9, there may have been a great financial crisis in the USA, so the consumption may be different. Likewise, people can put it in different arguments saying that your base year is a good year, or otherwise, so on and so forth. So the base year selection is going to be effectively a very troublesome task. Okay, 
Third one, does not focus on the quality of the items in the basket. Ah, quality. This is something which we didn't discuss previously. Okay. So uh, once you put it in a certain items of, uh, uh, let's say that rice example, uh, you put uh, some new duhal or some bahal, thinking that that is going to be the uh, general product. But in inside that sambahal or nibuhal, there can be various sub qualities. Not that I'm comparing samba to basmati or something like that. But inside uh, sambahal also, students, there will be different sub qualities. Yeah, different sub qualities. So, uh, in, uh, I mean, if you really put it into uh, a standard product like sunlight or uh, some uh, typical uh, signal toothpaste kind of a very generalized product which has been in this market for decades and decades, those uh, quality is going to be same from one point to the next one. No harm. But what about the rest of these items? These uh, pricing differences sometimes may be occurring because of the fact that quality is changing. That quality is changing. Maybe the concentration is uh, uh, getting impacted. Uh, maybe the uh, the weighting, uh, sorry, the weighting as in the the actual weights that you put it into a uh, item. If you take a one inch concrete uh, nail, just for example, just remember when you were uh, like back then in schooling age, that concrete nail will be will be very strong. Just go to a typical hardware and try to buy one nail and try to put it into a wall. What is going to happen? Either your head will get broken. Sometimes after uh, one or two uh, hammer hits, uh, it can get uh, torn likewise. So the quality may have been deteriorated over time. Yeah. So third point, but effectively it is saying is that although we select the basket, although we change the weights time to time, although we give the right weighting, still the quality from time to time, the quality differential or the sub-selection of this quality in a given time, whether one area you can find some bahal, there's a price. There's a certain quality. In a different area, you can find some bahal, but in a different quality. Then that way, your same uh, point, the quality of comparison of two baskets will be different. And also from time to time, uh, selected uh, one single basket, the quality may be deteriorated or improved over time. So third point, effectively what is arguing is that we cannot focus on the quality unless it is something very unique and being like in uh, the signal to paste or Siddha Alepa likewise which you have been uh, you know, developing in decades and decades all the other uh, qualitative aspects you cannot measure by using any of these indexes only price and quantity price and quantity is the business that you are focusing here all right practical difficulties in gathering data we just discussed under our uh, factors to be uh, be careful hmm? gather data uh, due to substitution effect hmm? demand for items in the basket can get changed uh, now what is this the substitution effect in economics we learn uh, sometimes now if a particular price is, uh, sorry if a particular goods price is going to be significantly high or due to unavailability people tend to go to this substitute products people tend to go to this substitute products. What is the uh, typical substitute product is going to do? It is going to give the same sensation, same experience, same uh, uh, enjoyment of using a product or goods and services by using a different product. Hmm? For example, let's say, uh, now buying a vehicle is very much different and uh, sorry, difficult in the current market context. Why? Because the prices are skyrocketing due to these import restrictions. So you just start substituting that to maybe uh, taking the Uber or Pitney in that case. The same experience, same service, transportation from one point to the next one, you're going to substitute. If uh, uh, you do not have milk powder in the country due to various reasons, you have to substitute that with the liquid milk. So similarly, you drink milk tea previous days with uh, the milk powder, now it's no longer there. You have to substitute it with the liquid milk. So now what, uh, okay, that's the economics part, but what is going to do to our indexes? So the demand for the items in the basket can get changed 
unknowingly unknowingly we are keeping milk powder and so on and so forth but due to the substitution effects people are consuming same uh, uh, experience but it is not from a good in our basket but from a different product so can we capture this it's going to be very difficult again you have to interview 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 and uh, get the real uh, raw data and see whether the people are consuming the uh, same product which have been used previously or due to various reasons availability and availability price hikes price doubling with the people are using a different product yeah so these are some few issues when it come to index preparations yeah so last but not least there are few uh, areas one uh, such area is the few real world application of our indexes and its usages and secondly and lastly we will discuss the rebasing part of it okay two things real wages and gdp deflator are the two widely used index based uh, numbers that we can see in the real world. so quickly let me give you an introduction so a real wage of a person is nothing but the inflation adjusted nominal wage inflation adjusted nominal wage what do you mean by this entire this is sorry there was a typo not this uh, no my yeah, there, there was a typo it should be nominal n o m i n a l namika nominal hmm? here versus nominal but what do you mean by this nominal wage is students now you take your salary the, those who are employed you take these numbers from uh, the uh, every year's january to the previous year's january likewise you put these numbers and then try to see whether you can see of, of course that anyone's salary may have been increased uh, but in real terms in real terms you may sometimes get a power salary why because of the fact that inflation has kicked in inflation has kicked in what do you mean by the inflation general price level appreciation of the goods and services so uh, this um, these indexes this is the part where the indexes are uh, being used the inflation you can calculate the real world uh, sorry real wage of uh, any person just by simply adjusting it with inflation by using this formula how do you do it you take the uh, nominal wage you take numbers like let's say uh, year zero year one year two likewise year zero you let's say uh, okay this is the starting point with the 30000 salary and then 35000 to 40000 likewise your wages are there and inflations 2% 3% likewise so effectively what you can do is you can adjust for inflation you can divide this by 1.02 this by 1.03 and calculate the real wage of these particular years so effectively if you do something like this you may see okay from nominal terms from nominal terms you see your uh, salary slip is going up and up and up that is 35 40 likewise but in real terms if you plot a different graph from 30,000 it may go on up by maybe 32,000 to 34,000 likewise at a much more smaller phase simply because of the fact that inflation index can give you the answer here okay that's one of the widely used uh, practical applications calculation of the real wages similarly GDP deflator is also another widely used index based computation with a base year and then we are computing nothing but the nominal GDP and also the real GDP. So these are effectively the same uh, computation as the previous one, the nominal GDP. The GDP is nothing but the, uh, the values of the goods and services that is produced by an economy for a given particular year. So you calculate this now, now from year on year, you, what can you see? The price levels are going up. So because of the fact that the GDP may also go up. But GDP deflator is effectively calculating nothing but an index similar to inflation. 
how do you do it? You take the uh, nominal GDP and real GDP separately, take the fraction, effectively this GDP deflator will give you an inflation like output, sort of like an index, where you can uh, see the effect of the price level increase versus the effect of the real GDP increase or decrease. What do you mean by the real GDP increase or decrease? That means the goods and services increase for a particular year versus the inflation impact coming for that goods and services because of the price level changes. So that index is also another practical application that you can see. Simple calculation is you take you can calculate the GDP deflator by dividing nominal GDP to the real GDP. Deflator measures the GDP change which, which has happened due to the changes in the price levels. This, so this will effectively take out all the other uh, what do you call the uh, production oriented parts and will give you the changes in prices. That, that's why I told you it's similar to the inflation like output. So the uh, effectively like in any listing, uh, this GDP deflator will also uh, can start with a particular year with the base year of content and likewise it can move on. Inflation and again here also inflation, wages and uh, GDP, gross domestic product. Okay, two widely used applications under coming under indexes. So this is the last point that we have discussed that is on the recalculation quickly i'll show you an example and we'll move on to a couple of exam questions so at the exam questions there are plenty more to discuss so the broader idea is students now uh, uh, 2010 to 2014 if you really look into these values of 180 to 200 to 25 to 50 300 now this is a particular index with a base year starting from year 2000 that means 2000 you may you may have had 2000 here with the starting point of 100 okay so again if i really want i can change the year 2000 to 2005 yeah so uh, there may have been a so likewise there may have been 2005 and it came to 2010 likewise and that's how it moved on now i'm going to choose 2005 as the base year i told you again and again if it is the base year you are going to start 100 from their points onwards so what i'm going to get it is something like this all these 180 200 now these values are going to have new values new values so this 180 is no longer this is the old index it computed up until one point and then we are discontinuing this old calculation and rather it will get a new set of values now this is that particular value instead of 180 this is that 180 and now we are going to get 110 for that particular value okay an easy calculation easy calculation let me show you with this work example and quickly we'll go to a couple of exam questions so see now this is 2012 uh, what you see here 100 120 150 180 200 this is the starting point uh, this is the starting point sorry this has to be the base here has to be 2010 2010 is my starting year base year okay in the middle i am changing 2012 to be my base year 2012 to be my base year so this is going to be 100 now so this 150 has been converted to 100 150 has been converted to 100 okay so uh, what can i do now i can effectively recalculate all the other values for example this 180 is now going to convert it to 120 what's the calculation see carefully this 150 has been equal to 100 see over here 150 has been equated to 100 150 to 100 if that is the case 180's value is going to be 
the fraction the fraction of 150 divided by one sorry 100 divided by 150 into 180 so this is a simple mathematical fraction that we can assign for the weighting of any value yeah if 150 is equal to 100 180 is going to equal to 180 multiplied by this particular fraction 100 to 150 careful with the upside down sometimes you may tend to miss it so that's how you get 120 over here yeah similarly this 133 how does it comes you take the same fraction you multiply this value 200 by 100 over 150 this is going to be 133 for the historical values also you can do the same thing no difference from the uh, starting point to the next point and to the previous points see same fraction uh, 150 to sorry 100 over 150 100 over 150 100 over 150 the same fraction multiplied by the historical values where you can get the new values 66 80 100 120 133 is going to be your new index so that's how you can effectively come to this particular a new set of values all right so that is how you simply recalculate the index uh, on any basis any starting point yeah. bear with me let's quickly jump on to a couple of exam questions and there you can <coughs> when i we can discuss a couple of more examples of this rebasing yeah. so before we wind up for the uh, theory for the day these are few of the indexes that is why to use in the string National Consumer Price Index, Whole Sales Price Index, All Share Price Index, S&P, SL20 Price Index, uh, Oil Indexes, uh, Healthcare Sector like us, there may be different, 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 much more used indexes in the country. The most important thing is that an authority, maybe a government agency, maybe a widely accepted private entity, should calculate this. Not that any you and I can do the calculation. It should be acceptable by uh, the other parties so that's how typically an index should be calculated okay having said that let's jump on to few exam questions there are maybe around uh, 20 questions that is with the slides i invite you to try them all but let me try to discuss at least two years of the recent past exam papers and make sure that you are familiar with the recent exam questions okay First paper, uh, question paper I'm pulling up is 2019 September question number seven. Excuse me. You go through the question. Consumer price index CPI and annual workers' salaries during 2013 to 2018, 13 to 2018 are given below. CPI changed its base to 2015. Ah, see. Now this has the base here of 2010 as the 100 see it's given clearly 2010 as the 100 yeah. if that is 100 now this this is 124 120 627 likewise this index has progress but from here what are they doing they're taking 2015 as the new base year so what's the value over here this has to be technically 100 see that's why cpi 2015 is going to be 100 if this is 100 compared to this point next calculations has happened 200 100 400 4 likewise okay and meanwhile these actual salaries these nominal values 360,000 375,000 likewise these nominal salaries of a particular person is also given in line okay all right those are the inputs First question, recalculate consumer price index as a single series with the base year of 2015. Now, single series, that means what we have to do is whatever this, this data not available for this new index has to be calculated. That's all. How do we do it? I pull up the suggested answer for you. Now, this 2015, 100, 101, 104, 107, these green color ones are given. And we know previous value for 2015, that is 127. And then 127. 127 has been equated to 100. So what's the fraction that we are going to use? Nothing but 100 divided by 127. So very straightforward. We multiply 
these individual values of 126 and 124 separately by the same fraction. What's that fraction? 100 divided by 127. So 100 divided by 27 multiplied by 126 is going to give you this old value 99 and 97 for these two years, 2013 and 2014. Yeah. Now just uh, take a look at these values. How beautiful it is 97 to 99 to 100, 101, 204, 107. Now this is a similar, similar series continuing from 2013 to 2018. That's how you simply calculate the, sorry, recalculate the index for the historical periods which you don't have values. Just by uh, taking the values of already available index and taking the starting point of these two indexes, merging point. All right. So that's one example. Second one. Considering CPI as an indicator for the cost of living, calculate the annual salary needed by a worker in 2018 to maintain his purchases or her purchasing power unchanged compared to 2015 and the amount of purchasing power lost or gained during this period. Now, now this is something very interesting. I mean, it will affect you and I also. See? Now, this salary is 2018. This guy is paid. 410,000. We have to compare this with 2015, isn't that so? Yeah, 2015. Now we have to take the assumption the purchasing power has to unchange. Purchasing power has to unchange. So this 375,000 which was at the 2015, with this inflation going into 107, we have to make sure that uh, his salary is being compensated for that. So the first part is simple we calculate this 2015 if it is equal to 100 2018 is going to equal to 107 this is the index if that is the case students this 375,000 should be equal to 401,250 how do we take this calculation just by taking the simple fraction again between the 107 to 100 yeah so simply effectively we are i am inflating this and effectively what i have done here i am inflating 375000 multiplied by 1.07% isn't that what i have done here it's the same thing here yeah? i am just multiplying by the inflation that means i have to get 401250 to maintain my purchasing power fair enough isn't it so inflation adjusted to this level so this is what is needed, but this is actually what I'm getting, 410,000. And effectively, I'm getting a gain of 8,750 from this comparison point of view. And this is the calculation. The, to, to get the uh, purchasing power unchanged, you need 401,000 something. And that is a gain of 8,750 when you look into the actual uh, receipt of the nominal value. Of the salary yeah okay third one analyze the salaries paid to workers in real terms during 2015 to 2018 this is where we can easily use that uh, index and uh, the discussion we had we can use this equation of uh, real salary uh, nominal salary divided by one plus inflation we can directly apply directly apply for this comparison what I have simply done is I have taken these nominal salaries of 375,000 likewise up until here and I have taken the index alongside it. Now without any equations I can simply divide this by the index but when I am dividing it effectively what am I doing? I am deflating, I'm deflating. Yeah. So 375,000 is the starting point. And I'm dividing 379,000 by 101, effectively, I'm getting 375,000. How do I read this number? This is 2016 real salary compared to 2015 starting point. Yeah, 2015 starting point of this index. Similarly, now whenever I'm dividing it by this particular index, what I'm effectively doing is that I'm comparing this with the starting point, yeah, not with the previous point, starting point. So, 
100, this is effectively what I'm doing. 390,000 multiplied by 100 divided by 104. Multiplied by 100 divided by 107. Once I do this, students, now look at this beautiful connection that I'm getting. This 375,000, although I see it as an increase of 390,000, but due to this price index, what can you see? Still, look at, uh, look at the bigger digits, 375,000. 375,000. This is absolutely 375,000. But now only here only I can see some increase to 283,000. So for the analytical part, if you uh, pull up a small graph like this and say that this is effectively for the first couple of years, it has been 375,000. And only in the last year, you may see a small increase to 383,000 is going to give you a good couple of marks. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wait, wait. There's a there's another last part also. Briefly describe some common errors made in interpreting general indices. Yeah. Did I plot a, some suggested answer over here also? Yeah. Now these are some of the general uh, misrepresentation of these indexes. First point: generalization of a specific index. You uh, classic example is that you take uh, the the CCP, the Greater Colombo Consumer Price Index, and try to uh, apply it for the whole country. You can't do it. You can't generalize it. You to make understand that why that index is being computed and the practical usage as it is. Second part: lack of general knowledge on indexes. Sometimes people don't understand what an index is saying and what it, how it is being calculated, so they tend to go and misrepresent the values. Okay. Yeah? Weighting has to be updated accurately. Uh, if, if the weights are not being uh, updated over a period of time effectively, the index doesn't make much sense. Mm -hmm. The quality, quality changes of the items in the basket, likewise, there were many other points that we discussed. I think, likewise, few points you can plot it into this answer to identify few common errors and issues in interpreting indexes. Yeah? Your answer has to focus on the interpretation part. All right, it's a good 20 mark question. Now see, that's what I highlighted at the beginning of the class. Now from these areas, effectively you will get a good 20 mark elective question. So look into the effort that you had to put it into calculations. It's very uh, straightforward and easy, so that's all. That's why I think after a couple of questions, you may see that it's the same thing, same style of question being tested again and again from this area. So we can effectively ask you to get the rest of the questions on your own. Yeah, we'll try a couple of more questions. Bear with me. Consumer price index, no, no, I, think, I don't think we have to you know, go through this. Just by looking at the table itself, I think you can understand. Okay, again, consumer price index are given from 20, uh, 2000 as the base year, 2010, 11, and 12. See, after 12 years, they are really, he decided to take 2012 as the starting point and take this as 100, 101, 100, 407. So, likewise, students, I think similar to the previous question, numbers are going to be pretty much similar. Effectively, what you can do is take the quick fraction of this uh, 100 over 127, multiply all these individual values of historical numbers where your index will be nicely 97, 99. Likewise, effectively, this is pretty much similar to the previous question, yeah? Okay. Second part, calculate the percentage change of prices from 2011 to 2015. Yeah, now here, from 2011 to 2015, you can't take the historical index. Why it is stopping at 2012? So effectively, you have to take the new index. Now this 2011 value is going to be the value that you just calculated. Yeah, just calculated value 99.21 to 107. This is the value that is given 107. This is an increase of 7.8%. I hope everyone knows how to calculate this increase. 107 over 99.21 minus 1 or 107 minus 99 divided by 99 or anything simply the increase or decrease. This is a 7.8 increase. Yeah, straightforward, five marks, easy marks. Third question, analyze the basic salaries paid to government accountants in real term during 2013 to 2015. 2013 to 2015. Now, 
these are the circuits and those circuits 379,000 390,401,000 okay what can I do I can easily take the index it's a price index inflation related so I can take these nominal salaries to real salaries just by taking the fraction is less so 379,000 divided by 101 multiplied by 100 uh, 375,000 similar argument isn't that so see this 379,000 equivalent to 375,000 this digit has been maintained across so 375,000 seems to be your salary effectively for the couple of years that's the analysis output what you have to highlight uh, now the last part is the important see taking 2012 as the base here now this is a hardcore calculation 2012 as the base here calculate uh, so, so calculate the uh, value for this consumer price index in 2016 using the last pairs formula with the following data uh, simple calculation but you have to be very carefully doing these things because multiple multiplications and additions can make sure uh, one or two things can go wrong and your index is going to be a complete disaster okay so check these numbers uh, p0 q0 you know that p0 into q0 is your base here that is where you start and qn do you really care you don't why you on the last pairs you take the quantity at the beginning q0 is what you need yeah so pn is your prices into qn is going to construct the pn q0 so last pairs index is nothing but sigma p n q0 divided by p0 q0 so these two values 161,750 divided by 141,000 is going to give you a nice 110 value for the last pairs index for 2012 sorry 2016 yeah so how do you interpret this this is you're taking 2012 as 100 if that is 100 this value is going to be 110 equivalent under last pairs index methodology yeah. good amount of work for that five marks but be very careful with your calculators i hope you are familiar with your calculators and you are pretty much practicing it every day another two questions i think uh, we can uh, try few but, but this question merely if you look into the uh, computation part of it pretty much coming from our previous lessons of graphs and charts uh, but i would really stress uh, on the first question why the fact is that the first question is very interesting simply because of the fact that your millions and metric tons and these thousands is going to kick in here just check this question the statisticians has collected following data on quantities of imports of major commodities in thousand metric tons are now highlight this part students see thousand metric tons in a country in 2016 2017 and there are international prices in us dollar us dollar per metric ton okay so now these quantities prices quantities prices these are there these price trends okay no problem you can even understand it fine but uh, check the first question Calculate the values of the commodities imported in uh, 16 and 17 and state in the following format. Present these values in a component bar chart in order to compare the imports in 2016 and 19. Now, what do they really want? They want the value in these years, so that means simply the price into quantity, yeah? But in USD millions. Now, this is where you have to be very careful, yeah? Check my answer, check my suggested answer. Now, first part these quantities are not going to be 70 140 uh, 60 likewise these 70s 140s 60s 1400 now these are going to be converted it into thousands isn't that so they are in thousands thousands metric tons yeah thousands metric tons that means this is where you can easily go wrong here so you see thousands metric ton as in i have to multiply each of these by three zeros to make sure it is in thousands once that is been done i can multiply it by these uh, uh, p zeros that is the price per metric ton and this is the effective dollar value that i'm going to get but 
that's not how they want they want it in this format in us dollar millions that means effectively you have to take six zeros out of it six zeros take out six zeros and take the final answer like this 16 only i'm discussing 17 is the same this thing so be careful you take the thousands of metric tons multiply and then again convert it into millions you know kilo is uh, three zeros millions is six zeros millions is nine zeros like this you have to be with the numbers yeah so the millions representation divided by six zeros then you are getting these numbers this is effectively what the examiner's expectation and this lovely uh, component bar chart hmm? why do we really do it once you have a table like it in the top it doesn't make much sense but the graphical representation gives you a much 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 meaningful this thing hmm? see b is the biggest component the first year 140 yeah see from this color it is still the biggest but it is declined to 70 it has half actually likewise i do think the second part is also pretty much on an interpretation it's asking for a, a draw percentage component bar chart in order to compare the percentage share of community briefly prepare uh, uh, what has happened with these quantities and the values now that of course i think students you can do it you can comment on whether the values has increased whether the quantities has increased price trends the stable or not stable what has happened to a c and d what has happened to b what has happened to e likewise you can do the write up but be careful with these two graphs i think we have discussed this in uh, the second lesson it's a component bar chart and this is a percentage component bar chart. what's the only difference this is you have to draw it with the percentages attached to it you know, percentages that means whatever you see here these absolute values this 31 42 30 140 for uh, uh, this 31 mm -hmm. this addition let's say this is fictionally 300 or something mm -hmm. so this is close to 10 percent this is close to 45 percent like why is this percentages only that you are pulling up here in this second graph yeah so from this percentage component bar charts you're forgetting about the actual values you're comparing the two imports with the percentage still you can see this is the biggest one this is the second biggest one and this has increased see this has increased this has increased while the blue one has decreased likewise you can comment on it but the only uh, question that we can discuss on the uh, indexes one is the last one take the 16 as the base here and construct a commodity price index using the last price index so pretty much straightforward and easy students what we all need to do is that you have the quantities now of course here this part you really don't want to mess up with whether it's millions or thousands just take any value just take in the quantities as uh, thousands and then you have the prices you have the q0 p0 p0 into q0 is the starting point then you have the n qn you don't really care why it is last pairs and then uh, pn into q0 pn into q0 is the part that you are calculating here pn into q0 is this portion 238 versus 275 you are seeing a declined index last price index is showing that if 2016 is equal to 100 this is going to be equivalent to 86 that's pretty much of it okay and from questions point of view i think uh, there are many more questions that you can try of course uh, i mean I, I could show you a couple of more questions but then again if you really look into the uh, computations per se experience you may either have a representation either you have an explanation into uh, uh, the usages the issues with an index or maybe some rebasing or recalculation Look at this question and the first couple of parts let me quickly take you through this question also take in 2010 as the base year starting point construct the consumer price index using the last place don't forget the partial formula sometimes try to work uh, just for understanding p0 q0 sigma versus pn q0 sigma you're getting the last pairs index as 167 provided you take 2010 as the starting point 
Then you have a salary, of course, that means the comparison is coming in. Uh, discuss the key factors, concerns, I don't have to repeat uh, the learning. Uh, third point, consider CPI as an indicator for cost of living, calculate the monthly salary needed by the worker in 2017 to maintain the purchasing power. Yeah. Now, this is the same argument. Now we can con uh, conclude our discussion with the, uh, uh, the index. It's a price index. Yeah. You start with the 100, it has moved up to 167. That means if your salary is 13,000 something in 2010, after seven years, it has to be 22,000 at least. To maintain your salary unchanged. Fourth part is bit interesting. It's asking uh, first part uh, purchasing power, low gain or loss after seven years. That is the comparison between the salary needed, that is just calculated value 22468 versus salary actual. Where did I get this value? Salary actual is given, see 21249. So these two points effectively are going to be the purchasing power gain or loss. So this is a loss. See, I need 22, but I'm just getting 21. The actual answer is 1219 loss is I'm making. Uh, on, on another hand, it is uh, inviting you to comp uh, compare this from the real point of view also, real point of view. 13,390 versus 21,249. These are the nominal salaries. These are the nominal salaries. You have to compare with the real terms. That means this 13,390, uh, you have to take it as 100. If that is the case, I want to compare it with 167. 167. That means this 21,249 is going to be equal to uh, 12,663. Yeah. This is how we calculate. Uh, 21,249 multiplied by 100 over 167. When you do it in real terms, what has happened? It has not even make a gain. It has make a loss of minus 5.43%. Uh, loss of minus 5.43%. Okay. So pretty much, I think that is the style of the questions by just looking at these four papers that you can observe. But be mindful, I really want you to try the rest of the questions on your own simply because of the fact there are plenty of MCQs uh, and some short-ended questions and let me highlight you one good question for you to essentially try now. now this question for example, 17 September pretty much similar to what we tried. This is again what we similar to tried. Uh, MCQs straightforward uh, what we have done previously. MCQs. Uh, Pretty much similar. Now this question is a good question. I'm sorry I was running out of a little time. Really want to try out this question simply because of the fact that now you see the GDP has brought in for this picture. I, I may find that this question will be a little tough to you but carefully try these four parts separately. If you have a, a question to discuss I'm sure I can find time at the beginning of the next class. Uh, the, the GDP will effectively help you to calculate the GDP deflator or the inflation related uh, index. Yeah. So then uh, once you do it effectively, you have this average uh, bank employees wages, then average uh, market value of the household consumption, then the population. So effectively this, uh, this part number three over here, it's asking you to calculate the real GDP per capita so and so. I, I mean, I could, uh, explain it to you uh, from economics point of view but just give it a try and then see, let's see whether you will find it any different from what we learn yeah? you may need a little economics knowledge also to just to answer part number three but the real other questions uh, one two and four you can answer with the knowledge that we have gained previously yeah so this is a good question 15 september to try on your own and the rest of the questions I can declare saying that it is pretty much similar to what we just discussed since the beginning of the class. Okay, thank you for the extra couple of minutes and like any other class, I can stop uh, for any questions for you to uh, be answering.
I think you may find this question uh, the uh, topic very straightforward, isn't that? So the computation per se is only have uh, three aspects: last pairs, parse. That's one uh, calculation, rather, and then. Uh, uh, rebasing, of course, it doesn't have much calculation, just a simple mathematical equation of maybe 100 to 127, likewise. And uh, the rest of the parts are pretty much theories coming from a uh, few applications on this uh, real versus nominal. It's all about inflation kicking in. And the rest of the parts are pretty much uh, coming uh, from the uh, practical aspects of uh, inflation, sorry, index calculation problems, uh, issues interpretation likewise all right if at all any clarity to be needed on the theory or the couple of questions that we discussed i can be still uh, hanging around otherwise we can wind it for the day and the next lesson will be a fresh lesson we are starting on the next week I, I hope two things. First thing is that uh, you are trying the other questions that I'm uh, leaving out because effectively, you know, uh, we are wasting time. It's the same style of questions and nothing much new to be discussed except that 2015 September question paper that, that I just showed you. And the second thing is I'm hoping you are uh, <laughs> continuing your uh, practice with the calculator. It doesn't have to be necessarily this model, but with the scientific calculator. You need to practice it heavily, students. You you don't have the luxury that I have to uh, you know plot these numbers in the Microsoft Excel and quickly uh, get the answer. So you have to do the hardcore manual method. On the Shehan's question on the exam dates, sir, I really don't have an answer for that. But uh, things are a bit uh, volatile with this current uh, Delta variant going here and there peaks happening, shutdowns are going on. Let's stick to our study plan. I'm sure maybe in another uh, one to one and a half months, we'll be done with the syllabus and then the revision will be coming up and I will be doing the 2021 uh, paper with you guys before the winding off of the classes. And I'm, sure, I'm just focusing on, my guess will be around in another two months to uh, ahead only you will have the exams. But again, it's up to the IBSL and the staff to you know determine the board. Uh, it's, uh, from the lecturer's point of view, we can't comment on anything concrete. But Shayan, let's you know stick on to our routine and uh, try to finish off the syllabus as soon as possible, and then jump on to much more questions and practice ourselves with the exam readiness. Yeah, don't worry. Just uh, focus on the uh, exam questions that we are practicing at the latter part of every class. That will help you to get through by one go. Any other questions, I can still be useful or we can wind it for the day. All right then, all good. Shall we close for the day then? All right, then everyone, please stay safe. Wash your hands always and let's meet up with the next class. Yeah.